Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I wanna to share with you how I made this watercolor night sky with distress inks. Here's a list of all the supplies that I used on my card today. So if you have any questions about products or colors of inks that I used, you can come back here and reference this list. So to start, I am starting off with a piece of watercolor paper taped down to a hard board. This piece of paper measures slightly larger than an A2 card front, so about four and a half by five and three quarter inches. Now I make it slightly larger so I can cut down my piece of paper later on if I need to. And also I can tape it down to my board and still have those white edges and it's still all gonna be watercolored on the part that I need. So I started by spraying my piece of watercolor paper and I'm gonna let that water soak in while I get all my Distress ink smushed onto my palette. Now my palette is a piece of white cardstock that I laminated and this has lasted me for, oh, more than six months at least. Now I like to use my palette like this because then I can kind of see what my colors are gonna look like and plus it's cheap and I don't feel bad whenever I need to throw this out. So my distressings that I'm using, I'm using picked raspberry first, some peacock feathers, then I have uh, crushed, no not crushed olive, excuse me. I have seedless preserves, that's the name of it, twisted citron, and cracked pistachio. Now I first sprayed these down with some shimmer spritz and this is just going to be my base layer so I really didn't need to use that right now. I could have waited but I did add the shimmer spritz here. You could just use regular water and now I am just placing down different layers or different stripes of this color. So I started off with picked raspberry in the middle. I went on to seedless preserves and peacock feathers on both sides of that. Then I'll come in with some twisted citron on just the right hand side. And finally I'm coming in with cracked pistachio on both sides. Now again, this is my first layer. This is gonna require a few layers of color. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. Now this does not have to be perfect. You just wanna get those stripes on the paper and start getting the color on there. So I dried that with my heat gun. You could always let this dry, um, just air dry. I'm too impatient for that. Now I am coming in with some more layers of color. So I started off with that seedless preserves and now I am blending between that and the picked raspberry. I'm not using a ton of water here because I wanna get more of that saturation going. I will come back in and add more water to get that blended out later on, but for right now, I'm concentrating on saturation. So next up is Twisted Citron, and then finally, the Cracked Pistachio, which you can't see, it's kind of down at the bottom there. Now the Cracked Pistachio is a lighter color. You're not gonna get as much saturation out of that, but that's okay. That is what I need to use later on to blend into my gray, and then eventually black. So I wanted to kind of go for that lighter color. Now here you can see I'm coming in with a few more stripes of those colors and just blending them into each other. I'll go ahead and dry this as is right on the watercolor paper. And again, I'm using my heat tool here and this is another reason I have my paper taped down. I'm using a lot of heat here, I'm drying, I'm using a lot of water. So my paper is gonna warp up this tape keeps it from doing that and keeps it from kind of rolling up on the edges so I can work in straight lines here. Now here's where I brought in that Hickory Smoke Distress Ink. I'm coming in just on those two corners. Now I started off filling in the whole corner here and this is dry paper at this point. And then I will come in and add some black soot just on the very outer corners to kind of deepen up that sky. Now I promise this will start to look better here in just a minute, but right now it is kind of looking just like a hot mess. So now in between each one of those colors, you can see the differentiation between each stripe. So what I need to do is come in with a little bit of color on the brush and some water. And I will just blend in between each one of those stripes. So I did that between the gray and the cracked pistachio. Then I came in with some black soot and I'm gonna bring it in towards the center of that just to darken up that color and get a nice gradient wash going. Now once I had that done, I came back in with my gray to kind of blend in between the cracked pistachio 
and the gray. And now I've got my whole surface, surface colored in with some type of color. So once that was done, then I went ahead and dried this layer. Now at this point, I got a nice saturation of colors, but I don't have that blended out between each color. So what I did was I came in with some more water, a little bit of color here, but really a lot more water than anything to blend between the two colors. Now at certain points, your colors are gonna get a little dry. I like to have a spray bottle on hand, like you just see me doing here, to re-wet everything and get them nice and fluid. Now down at the bottom, I also had to go ahead and wipe up my cracked pistachio. It's getting a little too much gray in there. So I went ahead and wiped that up and put down some new. Now here's where I am blending in between each one of those colors and just blending them between each other, kind of getting them to flow into each other. So a lot more water than color really, but I don't want to lose any of my colors either. You can see my seedless preserves is probably the strongest color on this page. So it started overtaking. So I added in a little bit more raspberry and a little bit more of that peacock feathers. Now in between the peacock feathers and the twisted citron, I came in with some more clean water and some more color and blended between the two, really trying to get those colors flowing and to kind of bloom into one another. Next up, I'm doing the top portion now, so a little bit more of that hickory smoke and cracked pistachio blending between the two colors and also black soot right on those corners to really deepen them up. Now again, once this layer was on, I came back in with my heat tool and I did dry this down just to speed up the process. If you weren't to do that, you would probably get a, li a little bit more blending in between the colors, a little bit more blooming. But at this point, I was pretty happy with the blend. So I decided to completely dry this with my heat tool, but you could let it air dry and get more of that gradient effect if you wanted to. Now I should mention that I am heating over that hard board too. My paper is taped to that. This is the stuff that comes on a clipboard. So you can get it at your local hardware store, you can get it online in stamp shops. You can also get a clipboard and just use that if you wanted to. But if you are heating this, you need to make sure that you have that hardboard underneath. It's gonna warp your craft mat underneath or it can actually burn your surface as well. That heat or that hardboard is gonna kind of protect my surface. So now that I had my actual background done, it was time to, I first spritzed it down with some, some of that shimmer spritz to add the shimmer back in. And then I came in with some white acrylic paint. This is my favorite way to make stars. I can dilute it down with a little bit of water or I can use it straight out of the tube and get a really nice bright white. But I like to put some of this on a palette, dip my paintbrush in, and then splatter this on. Now here you can see I've got a nice starry background going, but to get some of those stripes that you see in the star or in the sky sometime, I put this on acrylic block, added a little bit of water, diluted it down a little bit, and then flicked it off with my paintbrush. That gives me some of those long stripes so it looks like some shooting stars in the sky. Just a different texture on your card can sometimes be all the difference you need. So I let that dry completely, actually for a few days. This card took a few days to make. But once I had that done, I pulled out my inside scalloped rectangle die set. I'm using the largest die in that set to die cut this watercolor paper that I just made this night sky on. I'll need the inside portion of this, but you can see when I take this out, not only do I get that great sky background on the inside portion, but it takes me a few minutes just to pop this out really quickly. But the frame around this is actually gorgeous too. So I will save that and I will use that on another card. You could always add this frame to this card design. I'm gonna end up using a black frame, which you'll see in just a moment, but it is gorgeous. So save that piece if you don't use it. Now for my next die cut, I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut that same die, like I said, from black cardstock. And this one, I just need the outer portion, but I will save that um, inside portion to do a little bit more die cutting on. Now on another piece of black cardstock, I'm cutting this tree from the scenery dies. And then that inside portion of the frame that I cut, I'm actually gonna use the mountains from the scenery die and cut those from that piece of cardstock. And that's gonna make a nice die cut inlay. 
So on those mountains, I'll go ahead and add some liquid glue right onto the back of those. I like to use liquid glue when I'm putting my scenes together just because it gives me that little bit of play time to move everything around. I don't need to be so exact when I place it down the first time. I like to use glossy accents, just, just what I like to use. I like the nozzle on it. But you can always use multimedia matte, whatever you have on hand. Just a liquid glue is what I would suggest. So I put down those mountains first right on that starry background. And I am making this card in landscape. So everything is going to be from top to bottom here. Next up, I needed to attach that tree to the frame. So I put a little bit of glue on the left-hand side and the bottom and attach that to the side of that black frame. Then for my sentiment, I had a, or I had a flag banner die that I had previously cut for a card from some hot pink cardstock. I ended up not liking it, not using it. Whenever I have something like that, I put it in a little jar off to the side of my desk. So I have all these different die cuts that I can pick up and use on another card. I don't like to waste anything or throw it away. I mean, certain things I do, but not my die cuts. I like my die cuts. So I kept that. I stamped Love You More on it from the Simply Said stamp set from Craft and Desert Divas. And I did put a little curve in that on my acrylic block and stamped that in black dye ink. Now for my frame, I actually popped this up with some black fun foam. You can find this at your local craft store. I have the really thick stuff um, and I find that online. I'll leave a link to it if I remember. But I use that to pop that up so no white would be showing underneath that. The black blends in really nicely to the silhouette I'm creating. I attached those little polar bears. Um, I colored those up over on my Instagram if you want to check that out. I will attach these with a little bit of fun foam right on the top. I'm using what's left over that black fun foam. And then on the bottom, I have a little bit of straight adhesive that's going to attach to the bottom of that frame just so everything stays the same height. Now, like I said, I colored these guys up. I always put my coloring over on my Instagram during new releases because there is so much going on. So that will be over there if you want to look at that. That link will be in the, the description box below or over on my blog. But once that was on, this completed the entire card. I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial. And I'm going to leave you with this close-up and a few pictures of the finished card. Also, very quickly, I wanted to show you how much shimmer that shimmer spritz actually gives. So I grabbed out my flashlight here and you can see when I turn this in the light just how shiny and shimmery it really is. That does it for me today. Thanks so much for watching. On the left side of your screen, you'll see a few different links you can click on. The top will take you to a video you might enjoy watching next. The bottom left will take you to my blog where you'll find the supplies for this card. And the bottom right will subscribe you to my channel if you aren't already. Thank you guys so much for watching today and happy crafting.